I'm Kate McClellan, pro wedding planner with over 16 years of experience helping more than 400 couples down the aisle. I started Planning Collective to help all couples get through the overwhelm of wedding planning by sharing my actionable tips and tools that I've used over the years working with my clients. We'll focus on getting rid of what I like to call FOWO, the fear of wedding oversight. This is an unfortunate condition that almost every couple will suffer from at some point. Let's get you back to enjoying the planning process. Here we go. Hey guys, Kate here. Welcome back to another episode of the Wedding Planning Collective podcast. Last week, I walked you through our free guide on the four things every couple must do after getting engaged. And for this week's episode, I'd love to do the same with one of our other guides, Expensive Wedding Planning Mistakes. If you'd like to follow along, make sure to grab your free copy over at planningcollective.com forward slash free hyphen guides, where you can not only find copies of these guides, but we also have one on backyard wedding planning, as well as your pre-wedding worksheets. You can find all four of these guides again over at planningcollective.com forward slash free hyphen guides. And I'm very excited that we have some more freebies coming your way. Make sure you're on our email list here and you will be the first to know when they are ready to go. But for today, let's go ahead and jump in. The budget is often the most stressful component of planning a wedding, and there are several mistakes that I repeatedly see couples making. These mistakes can really add up and impact the entire planning process. So let's talk about the most common and expensive mistakes that couples make and discuss how you can be sure to avoid them. Mistake number one, booking your venue before solidifying your budget. Wedding planning lists commonly start with booking your venue. And while this should be the first thing that you actually book, it's definitely not the first planning task that you should be tackling. If I have the opportunity to talk to couples right after they get engaged, I definitely make sure that they have the budget conversation before you even start looking at venues or other vendors online. Your reception cost is gonna be between 40 to 50% of your budget. Until you sit down and work through your budget, not just briefly discussing general numbers, it's almost impossible to know what the dollar amount associated with that 40 to 50% is. And if you commit to or fall in love with a venue or catering company that will take up a significantly higher percentage of your budget, you'll be forced to make either tough cuts in other areas or more likely end up being over budget from the very beginning. In next week's episode, I'm going to really break down what that 40 to 50% needs to include. But for right now, make sure that you have a solid understanding of what your overall budget is and in turn, knowing what that 40 to 50% of that overall budget is before you start reaching out to venues. Mistake number two, thinking a backyard wedding will save money versus a traditional venue. Now, you certainly can pull off a simple and cheap backyard wedding, but it's often more expensive and a lot more work than couples initially think. Most will still want to have the structure or formality of a traditional wedding, even if they are opting to host in a private residence or backyard. And if you're doing this, that means you need to bring in all of the things that you would traditionally get at a venue. Once you add up things like your tent, table, chairs, all of the other rental needs that you'll have, along with catering and all of the staffing needs you'll have, you'll likely end up close to what those traditional venues are going to be priced at. If you are thinking of having a backyard wedding, make sure that you grab our free backyard wedding guide. It comes with a full checklist of everything that you may need to rent or consider before committing to a backyard event. Now, this isn't to scare you from having a backyard wedding by any means. I just want to make sure that all couples truly know what they're getting into when they sign up for a backyard or unique venue for their wedding. If it's purely to save on the budget, make sure that you're really taking some time to add up all of the estimated costs for these items and then compare it to your top choice if you were to have your wedding at a traditional venue. Mistake number three, hiring family or friends instead of professional vendors. Now. This one might seem obvious, but you'd be surprised how often I hear my aunt is making our cake or I have a college friend that wants to be the wedding photographer or DJ. And while the idea of saving money on these vendors can be appealing, it often results in added expenses and or last minute scrambling to hire somebody if they back out or if things don't work out. 
Since we're talking about budgeting mistakes here, let me share some real wedding scenarios that have cost my clients lots of money in the past. We have one friend of the family caterer bail after they have booked their venue, which was the only reason why they were able to stay within their budget because they were getting such a good deal on the catering costs. After they backed out, they had to hire another caterer that ended up almost doubling their initial budget. In another case, the bride's cousin messed up on the invitation designs and they had to rush order from a template website and pay overnight shipping. We once had friends of the groom offer to pack and clean up at the end of the night. Instead, they got drunk and left for an after party. The couple lost their security deposit from the venue and had to pay overtime for the cleaning staff to take care of everything. And finally, the mother of the bride, who is an amazing baker, wanted to do the desserts for the sweet station. Their oven broke days before the wedding, and they had to find a baker last minute anyway, even after paying for rush service repair fees that didn't end up fixing the oven. Now, just as a note of clarification, if your family member or friend is a wedding or event professional, I'm not really referring to them here. Most people have the best of intentions, but life happens, and professionals have systems in place to deal with whatever might pop up. And mistake number four is probably the biggest one, not having a miscellaneous category in your wedding budget. It does not matter how detail-oriented you are with your budget and planning, there will always be surprise costs along the way. And these typically pop up in the weeks or month before the wedding when you feel like you have no choice but to just pay the added cost. If your wedding will be at a traditional venue with minimal outside details or vendors involved, plan on putting about 5% of the budget aside for these miscellaneous costs. If you're at a unique venue or have a tented reception, I would recommend having closer to 10% for these unexpected costs. Here are some commonly overlooked last minute items. Stamps for both the invitations and the RSVP cards, delivery and service fees for rental items, late night pickup fees, gratuities for vendors and staff that go above and beyond for you, overtime fees for transportation and other vendors, and the printing cost for programs, menus, place cards, etc. In addition to having the miscellaneous fund available, I always recommend having about two to $500 in cash on hand the day of the wedding. This way you can be prepared if you need to have someone run out to purchase something last minute, or if you wanna tip an amazing staff member that made the day extra special for you. And if you're worried about making any of these or other wedding planning mistakes, make sure you join us over at the Wedding Planning Collective Facebook group, where we can help answer any of your wedding planning questions. And I'm so excited for the next series of our episodes coming up where we're going to really dig into finding your venue, your vendors, and avoiding even more expensive wedding planning mistakes. Thanks so much, and I'll see you in the next episode. Hey there. Thanks so much for listening to the Wedding Planning Collective podcast. Before we get started with the episode, I wanted to let you know about our all new Wedding Planning Blueprint course. I've taken my 19 years of wedding planning experience and created this course to help guide you from feeling overwhelmed, confused, and maybe even a little alone in the planning process to being informed, confident, and excited about planning again. This course is made up of five modules that will take you through the planning stages and include details on creating your budget and wedding design, hiring your vendors, food and beverage 101, rental checklists, and all of the pre-wedding details you need to get rid of FOWO, which is the fear of wedding oversight, amongst so many other topics that we cover. You can find all of the details over at planningcollective.com slash WPB course. And if you join before the end of January, you will also receive access to the weekly Zoom planning sessions. I hope to see you there. Music